Hello, fourth graders. Welcome to day 11 of the TDA Throwdown. Are you ready to rumble? We are working it out again today, getting ready for writing TDAs. That's text dependent analysis. Let's get ready to rumble. All right, yesterday we looked at literary elements. Literary is anything pertaining to literature. Those are texts that we read and we focused on fiction literature elements yesterday. Those included the plot, the setting, the characters, the point of view, the theme, the text structure, the stories, plays, poems, etc., and word choice. Today, though, we are taking a look at nonfiction literary elements. And just like yesterday, where we were able to work it out and identify all those fiction elements inside of you from all that experience you have had since kindergarten, I think that today we're gonna to be able to pull out those nonfiction elements just from all that you already know, especially what you've learned in fourth grade, especially what you've learned in just the last few weeks. So let's take a look at what you know about literary elements and nonfiction. Let's just start with this one. I'm gonna give you the first clue. Your teachers ask you this question after you read a nonfiction text. Who or what is this passage mostly about? What are we trying to find out? You got it, it's the main idea. But we don't just wanna know the main idea we also want to know the key details. You got it. So we're gonna write both of those here as literary elements. These are all the different pieces that make up nonfiction literature, all the different elements. So our first one is main idea and key details. Add that to your chart, please. We are on page 10 of the TDA Throwdown Workout Packet. Get it out. Forgot to give you those directions. If you need to, pause the video. Get it out. Participate. All right. Next up, let's think about nonfiction texts. We've hit this hard over the last few weeks with Unit 5. I'm going to give you some hints. This is all about how nonfiction texts are organized. Some are compare and contrast. Some are problem and solution. Some are chronological order. Some are description. What am I getting at? Do you remember? It's not text features. It is text structure. You've got it. So another element of nonfiction is text structure. Please add that to your chart on page five. Page 10. Text structure. Moving on, element number three. All right, this goes back to the very beginning of the year. And sometimes we talk about it. You may always think about it. You certainly think about it as you go about your day, your purpose for doing everything. What is your purpose, the author's purpose? Why does an author write? Does an author write to inform you, to entertain you, or to persuade you? Do you remember that lesson? We did it, we talked about PI, P-I-E, we wanted to know if an author writes to persuade, inform, or entertain. We called it author's purpose. So that is another literary element of nonfiction text. Pi. You could even put that in here in parentheses to help us remember what author's purpose is. Actually, this week, 
as we read Green Transportation Solutions, we're going to talk a little bit about the author's purpose. We could even think back to the articles about Hopeville and those opinion pieces. Why do you think those authors wrote those opinion pieces? Were they trying to inform, persuade, entertain? Probably trying to persuade people to make one decision or another about energy in the town of Hopeville. All right, moving back, thinking more about the literary elements for nonfiction texts. Well, we have text structure. We've also been talking about what text, what's that other kind, text what? Things like headings, titles, tables, charts, graphs, sidebars. What did we call those? The things in a text that help us understand what's going on, help us visualize. What are they called? Text features, you've got it. Let's add that. That is another literary element. I can't believe how much we already know about literary elements. And we didn't even know they were called literary elements. Today you know. Today is a workout you can do. Text features. All right, you ready? We have two more for this chart. Just two more, just two more. All right, this one's on the other side. I'm going to do the hand motions again. Do you know which one it is? Do you know which one it is? Go ahead and write it in. Write it in. You should know, just from the motions. It is nonfiction text can be written in any point of view. First person, second person, third person. So it is also a literary element. So add point of view to your chart. And the last one is the same one we had here, word choice. Word choice matters. And we don't always take such a close look at it, but maybe now that we know that it's a literary element, we might start paying more attention to it. So let's add it to the chart. Word choice. Our words matter. How we say them, how we write them, which words we choose to use, when we use them, right? When you say something to your brother, it matters, right? Your sister, your mom, how you respond, it matters. It's the same with authors, how they write something, it matters. So word choice is an important part of literary elements. There it is, my friends, literary elements. Before Throwdown 10 and 11, you didn't even know what literary elements meant. You didn't know that literary means having to do with literature and text. You didn't know that literary elements were what's needed and what makes up good literature. And now you have a list of the literary elements of fiction and the literary elements of nonfiction. Ladies and gentlemen, you are ready to move on with the TDA Throwdown Workouts. Moving on to workout 12, another day. You are ready. Good job, team.